Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Keith R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Quick announcement, no video from me tomorrow on Thursday. I will see you guys again on Friday. 1,371 days from the day the Cybertruck was unveiled to today when we have Elon posting just drove the production candidate Cybertruck at Tesla Giga Texas. That's equivalent to three years, nine months, and two days. Over the past few months, we've seen many release candidates, and now this is the first word officially that we get of a production candidate vehicle. Now I'm going to interject my own two cents. The word candidate is still present, so this isn't a production version per se, although it is the last step before we would get to official actual customer production. Either way, seeing this post from Elon, I'm now fairly comfortable expecting a delivery handover event to employees sometime in September. And not to be a wet blanket, but the VIN registration data we've seen from Tesla in the past still would put us sometime into October for actual customer deliveries. We still need to know the pricing specs and all of that, and hopefully they'll actually have an event to show the world what this truck is all about. Corey Steuben, formerly of Monroe Live, said fit, finish, and gaps looking really good. I'm no Monroe associate, but I do know how to use a Zoom feature on a computer, and my eyes were drawn to the front of the Cybertruck around the front area seeing this. I know there's some shadow things going on here, but maybe something to clean up in the weeks and months ahead. But in all seriousness, I've always been of the camp, whether Tesla or any company, any new production vehicle, if I'm buying it personally, I would like to wait a few months for them to work out all of the early kinks before I take my variant. And it's true that Elon is the hype man for all Tesla products, so we need to contextualize the marketer Elon versus the engineer Elon, and it's tough to say, but he did say, I think this is our best product ever. Incredibly high praise for anybody that's been following Tesla for years or a decade. I mean, the Model Y on track to be the best selling car in the world, selling around $60,000 is no slouch. I'd probably be smirking too if I knew I was about to make history again. So congratulations to Tesla. It's been a long road and a long wait from this unveil event that was unforgettable. And now we're only weeks or days away from real customer production of a vehicle that will undoubtedly disrupt the biggest car segment in the United States. It should be a moment of celebration for Tesla fans everywhere and a nail in the coffin to all of the, the Cybertruck is CGI haters out there. I <laughs> And just as I was exporting, I saw Elon say this, seemingly slightly perturbed by a question from James Locke. Elon said, when we are ready to do so, we will. Speaking on getting into specs, pricing, etc. While I think it's our best product ever, it's an extremely difficult product to build. We are in uncharted territory because it's not like anything else. And this is exactly why I've been comfortable being the wet blanket to make sure everybody's expectations are in check. We have James sharing a video of a Project Highland Model 3 on the 101 South in Palo Alto, California with what looked like some LiDAR hardware just out doing some testing. I would not read too far into this, but it's a fair question. When might we see Model 3 Highland production out of the Fremont factory? How long will it be after it starts in Shanghai or will it be simultaneous? Not a Tesla app told us FSD beta 11.4.4 has been released on the 2023.26 branch. But I wanted to highlight this because they do mention as well as possible support for hardware for vehicles. Sadly, they did not elaborate on that last anecdote, but it's a pretty big one because as we know, hardware 4 has not yet received FSD beta on any vehicles. 
So just a small glimmer of hope for you hardware for folks. If you're new, FSD beta historically for Tesla has been on older software branches. So as new features roll out, FSD beta customers are usually the last ones to get those updates. The hope is eventually Tesla will bring them onto the same branch. So when there are new Tesla UI features, the FSD beta crew gets those at the same time rather than having to wait. We do get an update and confirmation that Elon Musk is planning to visit India next year. As he said, I look forward to it over on X. There's been a lot of speculation out there that India is going to be the next Gigafactory that is announced. We've heard maybe we hear another one by the end of this year, but this would lead me to believe maybe Elon would want that visit before he announces that as a Gigafactory, and it sounded like India would not be the next one up, but eventually, yes, it will be one just not the next one, but that's just my speculation. A few days back, we talked about this new supercharger location in Spain, and today Esther confirmed that it will be a V4 location, the first one in Spain marking the eighth V4 supercharger in the world, question still remains, when North America? Speaking of supercharging in Canada, shortly after finally switching to kilowatt hour billing from time-based billing, they've now added off-peak rates at certain superchargers. Drive Tesla Canada reporting that so far, they've only been spotted in two provinces, BC and Ontario. So in addition to Tesla rolling out Magic Dock locations in Canada, now some locations are beginning to get off peak rates, in some cases around 50% cheaper than the regular rates. The Kilowatts got a quick interview with Jim Farley at Laguna Seca, and Farley talked about one of the biggest problems with electric vehicles. And now we, we just took the plant down for two months, we built no lightnings for the last two months to finish all the retrofit to go to 150,000 units. Incredible. Um, because the average price paid at lightning before we did this was like almost ninety thousand dollars and you know uh tripling the volume we have to get the price to where there's a lot more mainstream customers who can afford it i i don't think i'll ever use the range anxiety um phrase again because what i saw was charging anxiety um and what i learned a lot is that as we move from the evangelist to the mainstream in EV, that's happened in China, that's happened in Europe, but has not happened here. We're getting into customers who are very uneducated and they don't have a lot of resources to learn. And we have a huge human problem to solve. We can build all the vehicles we want, we can make them profitable, but in the end of the day, if people don't understand how to handle the charging experience, how the vehicle will perform, the real world range and cold towing, things like that, especially for us, the vehicles we make, you know, we have a, we have to do a better job. Is this I kept reliable? talking to everyone in our industry, why are we doing the railroad tracks over here? Yeah. In the US, there were different gauge of railroads and like, we we have to solve this. Not yeah. We're making it hard for customers. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Let's do better. Yeah, but there are all these reasons. But that's why Ford took the lead. Yeah, you know, we, we we have to think differently. That's why I separated the EV business because our prejudice on the ice side is to compete with people. And there's no such thing as frenemies in that world. That's why I created the EV business in Ford because we need a new kind of way of thinking. And frenemies in the digital electric world are a reality. Yeah. Everyone's working with each other. That's the reality. We've got to get our heads around that. And I'm, I'm totally, that's changed at Ford. We are. Thank goodness we separated the business. Yeah. So with all the data we've been seeing the past few weeks, where are you guys at now? Do more of you think that Tesla should advertise from an educational standpoint to start educating some of these mainstream customers that are skeptical of buying an EV? I also thought it was interesting to hear Farley talk about the frenemies thing, how with EVs, a lot of these companies are collaborating, one, because they need to, but two, Tesla leading the way with that open door policy, trying to help and pull others along, which of course is admirable. But in a recent interview with Bloomberg, Farley said, we can't keep saying companies are all electric, all hybrid, and there's nothing in between. That's baloney. There's going to be a lot of gray degrees of partial electrification, and that's still good for the planet. You can still have that emotional experience. I think that's where we're going to be for a while. We got some new data from IC Cars. 
Keep this number in mind, the average used car, both EV and ICE, sells in 49 days. New and used EVs now take twice as long to sell despite massive price drops, and the Tesla Model Y is the fastest selling used EV, taking an average of 47.6 days to sell. But on the new EV front, which would not include Tesla because they sell direct to customer, this is looking from a dealership perspective. New EVs on dealership lots went from 25.2 days to sell to now 50 days over the past year. And used EVs, which do include Tesla, are now selling even slower, shifting from an average of 26.4 days a year ago to 57.8 days now. For used EVs between one and five years old, the Model Y is the fastest seller and the Model 3 is in third. The Model X in fifth and the Model S rounding out the top seven. Before reading too much into this, I'd want to see another six to nine months of data because coming from a year ago, there is just more supply relative to when things were much tighter. I got an email last night from Tesla. You can get a $500 rebate on each Powerwall installed if you install before the end of October this year. We got a press release from the Public Utility Commission of Texas saying virtual power plants are providing power to the ERCOT grid for the first time. An ADER is just an aggregate distributed energy resource, and the two ADERs announced today involve Tesla electric customers who have Powerwall storage systems who have agreed to sell their surplus power into the ERCOT market. One of these systems is aggregating power in Houston, and the other one is in Dallas. And these two VPPs are the first to participate in the ERCOT wholesale market as aiders. Drew Baglino said, today's launch of the first phase of the Tesla virtual power plant is a milestone for Texas residents, Texas distribution utilities, and the ERCOT grid. Our collective work has allowed Tesla to build a decentralized energy ecosystem that seamlessly integrates stored solar energy from power walls onto the grid. Participation is voluntary, and right now the size of this pilot project is 7.2 megawatts. And the hope now becomes that this blueprint is then duplicated around the country and the world. This was an article about the Kia Rio being discontinued, but I wanted to highlight light trucks, a category including minivans, crossovers, SUV, and pickups, accounted for 79% of all new US vehicle sales for the first six months of 2023. Speaking of Kia, you may have just saw they have plans to launch two new EVs from their plant in Monterey, where they're looking to invest about a billion dollars to retool their factory for electric vehicle production. Tesla has officially opened its first supercharger location in the capital of Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. We heard in a recent interview with the PM that Tesla does have plans to start EV battery manufacturing in Malaysia as well. But because the interview clip I shared didn't make it super clear, I wanted to remind everybody that these foreign ventures in Malaysia most of the time are required to have that 30% equity ownership, but Tesla has been exempt from this rule because of all of the economic activity throughout their supply chain in Malaysia that Tesla can actually generate. Just another example of countries all over the world tripping over themselves to bring Tesla to their region, which is a great place to be. You may have seen the news about a chemical spill at one of the Altium plants in Ohio. Fast forward to today and operations have been restored. The company said it took immediate steps to contain a cathode mixing slurry leak that occurred over the weekend. Boy, does dry battery electrode sound better and better. From Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, part of the reason we've seen so many companies announce EV and supply chain deals for the Quebec area, a big factor is renewables, hydropower can generate around 95% of Quebec's electricity needs. And for years now, we've heard rumblings of Tesla in talks with different locales in Canada. So feels like just a matter of time until we get a big announcement of Tesla setting up shop in Canada as well, more so than they already have. A storyline to watch in the years ahead will be how Ford handles F-150 Lightning battery selection because with this new cathode plant in Quebec, they're saying it's evident high nickel cells destined for models like the F-150 are vital for those higher performance specs. But we've also been told that Ford is looking to integrate LFP batteries into the F-150 Lightning lineup. The most logical would be lower trim, higher trim distinctions, but Ford did say that next year we should see LFP batteries in the F-150 Lightning. Stellantis is the latest company to basically wave the white flag saying they need help to generate sales in China. They announced they're considering a tie-up with a Chinese EV company and they're exploring potentially working with Leap Mode 
Motor Tech, the company that VW is working with. They're weighing their options like investing in a local EV firm and a business partnership that would help it grow in China. If you missed it, Stellantis stopped production at their only Jeep plant in China last year and they weighed ending all car making in the country. Tavares, the CEO, said he's happy with his decision to downsize, saying BW and GM are under pressure in China as vehicle producers slash prices. So the legacy struggles in China continue. And just a quick hat tip to Polestar in a press release today they announced they have officially started deliveries of their upgraded Polestar 2. More importantly though, over the last three years, they've crossed the 150,000 car manufactured mark. More importantly though, over the last three years, they've now produced more than 150,000 cars. Don't forget, no video from me tomorrow on Thursday. I will see you guys again on Friday. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.